Hello everyone, in the last video we saw an introduction to DNSSEC and if you want to see it, uh, if you missed it, I will put the link in the description. And in this video we are going to actually go and configure DNSSEC. So what we will actually do in this video is create a new DNS zone and create some A records to test with them. Then we are going to sign the zone on one of the domain controllers, which will also be our key master server. After we wait, of course, for the Active Directory replication, we check the zone on the other domain controller. We will see how to replicate trust anchors after a zone has been signed and wait for the other domain controller to receive them and uh, sign its zone. And in the end, we are going to shift on the client side, configure a group policy with an NRTP rule, thus making the client validate the DNSSEC records that it gets and see how it works. Before going and really configuring, I want to also give you a couple of details on how it works. When you sign a zone, you can sign it with default settings, which means next, next, finish. This is very simple. And actually the default settings are very good and very secure. You could also use uh, settings from another signed zone, uh, take them from that zone, use them in the new zone. Or you could uh, go and uh, uh, manipulate each setting at a time and sign the zone with your uh, own uh, settings that you want. One thing which is important and it's included in the default settings is that it's not advisable to check the box for replicating the trust anchors. And in case you have still the uh, 2008 R2 DNS servers uh, as domain controllers, it's actually mandatory to not uh, use it because then those servers will not be able to validate your uh, uh, DNS uh, resources. The way that the replication works is that all the other DNS servers will receive the zone unsigned through Active Directory and it will sign it themselves. This of course is to reduce uh, network traffic. And the same rule applies also to uh, DNS updates. Let's move to DNS clients and talk a little about them. And one important thing is to know that DNS clients by default do not require DNSSEC validation. So if you have a DNS server with a DNSSEC signed zone, it will not make any difference if your clients do not validate that zone. And with this in mind, uh, the clients that support DNSSEC are Windows 7 or 2008 R2 and above. If you have uh, still XP, those will function with the normal DNS without any security extensions. And one more thing, the rules that we uh, talked about in the last video from the NRPT can be applied to clients to force the validation of a specific zone. So uh, that table can contain many rules, each rule for a specific uh, DNS zone. Okay, enough with the talking, let's uh, get going and configure DNSSEC. So I'm on one of my domain controllers, I'm on a DC02. And this one is the one that I will use to sign my zone. Let's create a new test zone to not sign directly the uh, testcorp.local. I'll create a new zone. Uh, I'll make it primary and integrated in Active Directory. And I will name it sec.local. Okay, the zone is created. And so I will just uh, create a couple of uh, test records in it. Thank you. 
I think it's okay. Three records are enough. And uh, now, uh, I before I uh, go on and actually sign the zone, I will want to wait for it to also replicate on DC03. Okay, my uh, zone is now replicated. So let's move on and on DC02, I will sign it with DNSSEC. Just right click. Ah, and by the way, uh, I have uh, also PowerShell commandlets for all of this uh, stuff to sign the zone and uh, uh, configure the DNSSEC which you can find in my github page but in this case we are going to do it from the console so sign the zone and here is where you get to choose what you want to do what uh, settings you want to use let's uh, customize the settings so you see what we need to do first we need to select the key master and i'm fine with this one being the key master Next, we have to create the parameters for the key signing key. Click on add. And mostly all of this is uh, correct or it's secure enough in most cases. One thing to take note of is the uh, rollover frequency. So each 755 days, the key signing key will be replaced. So this is correct. Let's move on. Now we have to give the details about the zone signing key. And this is more or less the same. But take note that the rollover frequency for the zone signing key is a little more frequent. It's 90 days. This is where we can choose if we want to use NSEC free or NSEC. Let's choose NSEC free. And this is the part that I told you about, that uh, it's better to not click it now, to leave it like this. Uh, maybe test the zone signing before you replicate trust anchors to all your other DNS servers. And this uh, is okay, this is for uh, creating the DS record. And we are done. If I will refresh now this zone, come on, come on, come on, refresh. You can see that we have a couple of more records. You see that each host record has also an RRSIG, which tells it that it covers a type A record and it's for T1. You can also see that we have a couple of NSEC free records. We should have four NSEC free in total and if we look at an NSEC free you see that uh, everything is encrypted you can't really make out what this contains which is what we were after and uh, since we use NSEC free we have the NSEC free param record now one thing to note is that this server uh, does not do anything for now so this server still has this zone unsigned and it will remain unsigned because it does not have any trust points or trust anchors so it doesn't know uh, that it should sign the zone and this is what I was talking uh, maybe it's good that you test uh, some clients to uh, point them only to this server see if it's okay if everything is okay then maybe you can uh, then replicate the trust anchors let's replicate the trust anchors now dnssec properties and now we can check this box and in some time we should see that in trust points we get our new zone with the trust anchors basically with some dns key records now of course this being active directory it will take some time to uh, replicate the trust anchors and i see that now they are replicated so you see the trust anchors here 
And now the interesting thing comes. You would think that since the trust anchors are replicated, this zone will be signed immediately, but it's not how it works. Uh, when DNS servers receive trust anchors, they will sign the zone uh, in uh, an interval between 5 and 30 minutes. This is because if 10 DNS servers receive trust anchors at the same time, they should not be in heavy load to sign the zone at the same time. And this is uh, the reason. And I can show you in logs in DNS events. So what you are after is the uh, event with ID uh, 7653. And this tells you that the zone will be signed in this amount of time. After the time passes, of course, the zone will actually be signed and the two servers now can uh, validate their uh, responses. Let's go to a client and uh, check out a few things first. So now I'm on a client and I first want to show you this cool command. It's called resolve DNS name. It can uh, be used instead of NS lookup. And it has a cool parameter that it forces the client to require a DNSSEC validation without configuring it with a group policy or something else. So if I run it, you will see that uh, the client uh, got the T2 sec local from uh, our server and also got some DNSSEC information from it. If I would remove the DNSSEC OK, OK part, it would only validate as a normal DNS client from a normal DNS server. So this is what I wanted to show. Let's now configure a group policy that will uh, make this client always request DNSSEC validation. So I'm back on my domain controller. Let's go to group policy management. And in a group policy I have this organizational unit where I have my client. Let's create a new group policy and link it here. And let's edit this policy. We have to go to policies, to Windows settings, name resolution policy, and here we can create a new policy. So we have to specify a criteria that the client knows uh, when to apply it. And we will use suffix for this. So everything that ends in the seg.local will be targeted. We want to enable a DNS seg and we want to force the validation. With this rule created, let's press create. Now it's added to the table and press apply. After you do this, it should uh, remain and it should apply to the client correctly. Let's first take a look and you see the rule here. Update again the group policy. And now every resolution you do should be automatically using DNSSEC. And you see that now I don't have to pass that parameter. This client will always use DNSSEC for everything that ends in .sec.local. And if we look uh, here, you will see that this rule uh, now always shows up as effective. This means that it applies always on the client for this zone. So that was it with a brief introduction to DNSSEC. If you enjoyed the video, I would appreciate a like. Uh, please consider also subscribing and I'll see you in the next one.